Hi, welcome to What Do You Know Wednesday. Today for What Do You Know Wednesday, I'm going to be talking about um, my portion of a media buying for PVC presentation that we did at our um, monthly training day. The portion that I removed is Eric Couch's portion on Google TV. Hopefully I will be able to get him to do a video blog about Google TV really soon. Uh, he had a lot of really great stuff. But So what I'm going to talk about is a media buy plan that I created for a client that um, had requested one recently for their Google Display Network. Uh, and I will also be talking about YouTube a bit because I am using YouTube for this client and um, no one in our uh, agency had really used YouTube advertising before and I think it's really cool so for those of you who aren't familiar with it I'll share some of the information for you and I just kinda wanted to give a little bit of background on this picture so when I think of media buying I immediately think of Mad Men because Mad Men's one of my favorite shows so I immediately had to go and Photoshop all of the Hannapin paid search uh, teams faces onto their appropriate Mad Men characters, and I think it turned out pretty well, so I like showing it off to the whole world. So, to get things started, I'm going to talk about the Google Display Network Media Buy Plan that I made. So, basically, when I was told that I needed to make a Media Buy Plan for Google Display Network, I went, oh what? Because I don't know what that is. I don't have a traditional marketing background, so I'd never created one and just never heard of one. Obviously, I made some guesses about what it might entail. But after Googling, um, all the examples that I found were just really complex, so I didn't find any good backbone or um, skeleton that I could start working with, so I made my own. Um, I decided that what would be really important to show the client um, of how I'm going to be spending their money on the Google Display Network is to focus on the topics, interest categories, and contextual keyword lists that uh, I was going to use to target automatic placements on the Google Display Network. And then I also included a little bit of strategy and definitions just so um, they could know exactly what I was talking about. So um, let me just show you what I made. Um, keep in mind this is an anonymized version, so I didn't want you guys to know the client that I was working with or, or what I was using to bid on for them. So um, I just did a find and replace for some words, and now it's a little silly, so don't hold me accountable for stuff that doesn't make sense. So this is the first page. Um, and this is the topics page. So I just went through um, and picked all of the topics that I was going to bid on just to show them. Um, you see I put their, our logo up here, their logo here. That's not really their logo. Those are just some cute little pets. Um, and just gave a brief definition of what topics were and how I was going to use them um, with text ads, image ads, and video ads. And then that I was going to use them by themselves and combine them with interest categories and contextual marketing. Um, so the same goes for the interest category marketing. It's all the same categories, but they work differently. So I explained how they work differently, and again, how I'll be using them, what kind of ads, and what kind of layering I'll be using them with. Uh, and then, and then the contextual keyword lists. Uh, so I just went ahead and made contextual keyword lists, and I made the contextual keyword list through different stages of the buying cycle. Might not exactly reflect here since now it looks silly, but um, uh, I, I, just different stages of the buying cycle, so research, um, actual, you're looking for somewhere to buy it, or looking for reviews, that kind of thing, um, for each different product that they have. And so now that I've made it anonymous, it looks like cat blogs and pet breeders. But you, you get the idea here. I mainly wanted to show them the different sets of keyword lists that I was going to be looking at so they knew exactly what kind of uh, automatic placements I would be targeting for them. Um, so this is what I would have done differently. Now that I've finished it and given it to the client and talked to the client about it, I would have included a front page that went into specific details about budget, so like exactly how I was going to divide that up. To me, it was just common sense that I would divide it up equally between all campaigns to begin with um, and do the math to make sure that the daily budgets were set in accordance with what they could spend on the month. But uh, they didn't know that, so I should have explained that in, in a front page. Uh, also, bidding method, they had questions about CPC versus CPM. I sh should have went into detail about that for them. Um, and then described the benefits of using automatic placements only at first. So they had a lot of questions about why I wouldn't want to use um, an ad planner or something like that to pick a, a, 
a handful of managed placements at the beginning, so I should have gone into detail about my strategy. So having a nice first page with um, a lot of information and detail would have been really helpful for them. So in the future, that's what I would have done. And if you guys are doing this for the first time, I suggest you do that as well. Uh, so YouTube ad uh, AdWords advertising, um, all you have to do is connect your YouTube account, select the targeting, set the budget, and you're on your way, or so the YouTube uh, advertising site tells us. So first of all, um, in display ads, offer your videos as a display ad alongside uh, related YouTube videos or on websites on the Google Display Network that fit your audience target. So this is just regular display targeting. Um, you just set, instead of using image or text ads and display targeting, you use video ads and those will show on YouTube in, um, in display ads. And you can use topics contextual and interest targeting just like you do for any other regular display campaign. Um, Trivia ads are really cool. They're the type of ads that YouTube uses. Um, it means that you don't pay for an ad um, unless they're they're clicked or watched. So in stream ads, they play like a TV style ad before or during another video from a YouTube par partner. Um, video uh, the viewers will see the five five seconds of your video and then they can skip. Um, or keep watching it, and then you will only pay if they watch at least 30 seconds or to the end of the video, whichever one is less. Inflate ads show before YouTube partner videos that are 10 minutes or longer specifically. Uh, viewers choose to watch one of three ads or see regular commercial breaks during their video instead. You pay only when viewers choose to watch your video. In search ads appear above or to the right of the regular result on the search results page. You pay only when a viewer chooses to watch your video. See, the, the theme here is that you're not paying for, for just um, glimpses or, or when YouTube forces someone to see the first couple seconds of your ad. Uh, and in, in display ads, um, we, we already went over those, but they have those for true view ads as well. Um, and I think that this cut off on the PowerPoint a little bit, but this last bullet point is remarketing. Um, so YouTube has its own remarketing. They accept double click boomerang lists. Um, of AdWords marketing list, uh, and you can also add an AdWords marketing pixel to your YouTube channel to target your fans on YouTube. Um, so you can even use um, such tactics as using negative targeting to create custom audience segments. So that's really cool that YouTube has its own remarketing. Um, and then mobile with, uh, so there's 400 million videos watched on mobile devices every day, and the mobile version of YouTube is the number two video viewing website in the world right after YouTube itself. So that's pretty cool that they offer that. Um, and then it looks like I still click through URLs. So click through URLs. Um, you can make custom URLs and add them to all your videos on YouTube. So that way when they, when someone clicks through, you can track that in analytics and see um, the actual user behavior for YouTube. So it's really cool that they offer that. Um, and here's some stuff that I think is really cool, but probably doesn't really work unless you are a huge company or um, a huge client, or maybe you're lucky enough to be promoting some cool stuff like blockbuster movies. Um, but Homepage Roadblock uh, makes you the only advertiser on the homepage uh, for 24 hours. So every time you log into YouTube and you just see, you're just blasted with ads from, you know, whatever movie just came out or whatever album just dropped from some famous um, pop artist. That's a homepage roadblock. Um, and the YouTube First Watch makes you the first ad that most viewers will see on YouTube no matter what video they choose. So no matter where they go on YouTube, the very first thing they see is your ad. So again, probably very expensive um, and probably something that you would only want as a huge branding um, campaign. The Zoo uh, is YouTube's creative uh, innovation group uh, and it's an agency for agencies. I thought that was really cool. Um, the name salutes the first video ever uploaded to YouTube, which was me at the zoo. So basically, if you have um, a lot of money you're looking to spend in AdWords, and you want some really cool custom creative solutions, you want to talk to the zoo. Uh, and then YouTube has its own analytics. You can go through and see um, specific things about demographics and people who viewed your your videos, people who have liked your videos, people who have liked your channel, um, and you can. Uh, decide to target these people in different ways depending on what you see in the YouTube analytics. So you can change the demographic bidding if you want, um, or demographic targeting, and choose um, maybe which groups you want to remarket to based on YouTube analytics. So I think it's really cool that you just get that second um, bit of insight. In instead of regular Google analytics, you get an actual YouTube analytics, which is just more integrated into YouTube. So there you have it.
Um, thanks, and you look at this awesome picture again as I sign off uh, for another What Do You Know Wednesday. Bye.